There's two problems. Nobody reads the label, and they figure that they bought a bottle, let's use it up. Yeah. You know? Yeah, see? Yeah, let's use the whole bottle. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's never me. You know, it's always somebody else. Well, I knew a story one time. <laughs> and you get this distortion. See that? Now, I got a great one. I had to go out and look at some pines that looked like this. They were all dying. Every pine. And it was at a monastery thing. And one of the sisters kept looking at me. If you went to Catholic schools, that makes you nervous. And she's looking at me and looking at me and looking at me. She says, I know you. And I'm going, oh, no, I know you. She says, you're on Garden Line, aren't you? Which I am, that TV show. And she says, can you tell us what's wrong with our tomatoes? I go, no, I'm a tree guy, I'm not a tomato guy. She says, well, it's interesting. All the grass clippings from our lawn area that we put around our tomatoes, the tomatoes look like this, just like the pines. But where we use grass clippings in town, they're fine. I said, show me the tomatoes. And what had happened is their lawn care company mixed in Tordon, all right, to kill all the thistle in that, killed every pine on the property, every pine. And they couldn't replant for four years. And, that. and by the way, when I said this was the problem, and here's the poor guy that did it, that forgiveness then thing, it doesn't seem to apply. <laughs> oh, this is one of my favorites. Here's the other problem with you folks. All right? Sometimes you own a piece of property, and you got a buddy. And you said, you're my best bud. I'm going to sell you half my property. So you can live out here too. And then your best bud immediately builds a house taller than yours that blocks your view of something. So now he's no longer your best bud. So now you want to get even. And believe it or not, we have a problem with you trying to kill your neighbor's pine trees. Yeah, I think they're hilarious. I love this place. <laughs> and so I went out to this property. All their pines look like this. The lawn looks fine because it won't kill the grass. And, you know, what was killing their trees? They couldn't figure out what was killing their trees. And we figured out, oh, yeah, this is Tordon. And they actually went and found that, yeah, their neighbor had bought the Tordon. All right? And they found Tordon in the person's tank. And, yeah, indeed, it was a Tordon. And the homeowner had intentionally killed his neighbor's trees. All right? Yeah, so. Yeah, I know. See, I do do some CSI work out here. <laughs> he, he read the label. He read the label. He read the label, yeah. Yes, ma'am. It can stay there for four years. It certainly can stay there a year or so. I mean, it doesn't fade very quickly. And I'll show you other ones to use. And Yes, ma'am? Does it bother your water supply? Well, yeah, it gets in the water. You never use it around wet areas because it'll move. It won't kill the trees in your property. You'll kill the trees all the way downstream, too, and that's one of the problems. And we, you know, you'll start. It doesn't take much in it before you get these distortions in that. It's a pretty good killer. We also have these photosynthesis inhibitors, and Princeps probably the most common one on this. We don't use too much atrazine in that on trees. But on this, you'll start getting discoloration on foliage. And I'm not trying to turn you into an expert here. I'm just trying to show you, we, by the injury on the plants, we can get an idea of what chemical may have resulted in the injury and be able to uh, figure it out there. Um, we also get these amino acid inhibitors and these just kind of stop uh, uh, the formation of the proteins. But uh, chopper, plateau, this is outs. These are two that are fairly common to use safely. But the real key thing, oh, that's what you'll get for the looks. But the key thing is, what do you do? So let's go over a couple of the weeds. Canada thistle. It's Canada thistle, not Canadian thistle. And, I'm, and it's a shame we blame the Canadians for this. It's not their fault. But this is, this is the biggest weed problem in the state. And you take a look at numbers. And it's a big weed problem out here in the hills. You all know that. You can see it everywhere. And it's kind of like the mountain pine beetle problem. Or, you know what, we got it back in Brookings. And you can do as good a management as you want. But if your neighbor doesn't, you're just watching those seeds coming. So it's the same, same sort of thing. Bigger the management unit, the better. It's a perennial. That's the problem. Reproduces by seeds. That's overemphasized. Horizontal roots. All right. They can extend several feet and many feet horizontally. And our biggest problem is people go out there and burn the tops. They go out there and apply a herbicide at the wrong time, kill the top of the plant, but they didn't kill the roots, did they? And then the next year it comes back and they say, oh, it must have seeded in again. No, it came up from that expansive root system. You can do just enough spraying to kill off the tops, but the roots stay alive and then you forget a year. Have you ever seen that, that you thought you've done good control for a couple of years, you didn't see it, the next year you didn't, and it came back the same spot? And you go, how did it seed in there again? It didn't. It was that underground root system just waiting for a chance. 
uh, to come back. And so, how long does milestone last in the soil? Here's a great answer. We don't know. That, there's some caution with milestone. I'll mention that right now, in fact. Um, wet years followed by fires are best. Control before bud stage. Before bud stage. Curtail, milestone, or stinger are probably the ones to use. Uh, milestone is a very good chemical, but, 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 read the label. Don't use it around conifers. So if what you've got are pines, don't use milestone. I, I get a lot of that as a problem. And don't use it if you've got a pea shrub hedge. If you're one of these folks that live near town and got pea shrub, it kills legumes and it kills conifers. Deciduous trees, aspen and that, I'm not worried about. But stinger or curtail are probably your better choices, and I cannot overemphasize read and follow label directions. Don't exceed the rates. Apply them at the right time. Otherwise, all you're going to do is burn it and just kill the tops. You're not going to kill the roots. And what you want is a good root kill. Yes, sir? Yeah, there's a, I, when I list these three, I should say I'm, I'm not listing the only ones that work. I'm working the, listing the ones that are most commonly available. Thank you. So uh, the exclusion of one doesn't mean it doesn't work. Yes, sir? Yeah. Well, now you're in the curtail probably or stinger. Those are the two to use. Yeah, or stinger. Oh, yeah, these sort of things, I can get you some stuff, but, I mean, if you go, are you out here in the hills? Warren Chemical will carry those things. They'll tell you. In fact, you know what's interesting? I, I talked to Vic. Oh, oh, I see. I'm sorry. Yeah, that I can't. That, uh, I know, for that part, you'll have to memorize Stinger. Uh, but here's the good thing. I've talked with Vic at Warren Chemical, one of the sellers out there, and if you walked in and said, well, I'm trying to kill Canada thistle, and he, he'd flat out ask you, do you have pines? And if you said, yeah, I said, well, the milestone's off. Well, you're not selling you that. Stinger, if given a choice, but they're both fairly effective. You'll find six of one, half a dozen of the other, but stinger I like. No, once. But, I mean, if you do it the right time, that's fine. If you do it the wrong time, it's going to keep coming back, and you've got to keep spraying it. Yes? Oh. If you, if you get the root, you might get a good enough kill, you're not coming back for years, but you'll never get all of it, so don't be shocked if five years you're going out and doing a little spray again, or the next year you have to do a little touch-up spray. You get it enough and spray it at the right time, you can eliminate it from an area. You honestly can. I've done that. But again, far too often people hit it at the wrong time, they just burn off the tops, they do it for a couple of years, think, see, I'm done. The next year they don't spray, and it comes back just as thick because they didn't kill the root. So right at that stage right there? The rosette stage is a little bit bigger than that before bud set. Yes? On these sort of milestone you don't, for those, yes. A lot of these do require an applicator's license. No, milestone you don't. You can buy that. By the way, I, I mean, I use milestone for the hardwoods. When you buy Milestone, the first time you do it, you'll, you'll go, <gasps> it's expensive. You can buy it in fairly small containers, but when you take a look, you're adding so little per acre. It lasts a long time, all these do. Yes, ma'am. Way in the back. Is it too late in the year to spray for noxious weeds now? Would, it, would we be better off waiting until late spring? No, some of them can get a pretty good kill. I'm spraying next week, give you an idea. You know. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it tends to, it's, it's still, there's fairly good certain when they get there. Yeah. Um, all the weeds love it. And I get out there and I want the hillside to look and the roots and told it maybe a thistle before, but it's about that high. And I put it in scrubby stage and then I burn it. Yeah. And it's less maybe here, but I, I do it when the ground's wet. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, just, Am I actually maybe replicating it to a point? Well, let me go over what she's say, doing. What she's doing is she's out there hand-pulling Canada thistle. That when it's wet, she pulls it out. Now, keep in mind, when she pulls it out, she's getting a root, but there's horizontal roots she's not getting. Yeah. All right. And, 
you know, and she's saying, am I getting anywhere? And I think you, you did say you're seeing less of it. Well, what you're doing is exhausting the darn thing. All right? You know, I mean, you're just beating it up. All right? You're just, you know, just, just punch, using them as a punching bag. And you keep doing that, you'll reduce it a lot, but it's almost like mowing. You'll never kill it off completely. What you may end up having to do, and, and it may require some very, very carefully applied spot treatments, you know, just to finish it off. What you're doing is good. You're, it's a holding action. But it will not eliminate it because every time you pull, you say, I got a root, but that side root's still in the soil, and it'll pop another top up there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know. It's just, uh, yeah, I know. I, I, sorry about that. You're, you're just not having a good day. Mountain pine beetle and weeds. <laughs> yes, from the back there. No, that would be you. I'm sorry. So if you have a, if you have a thing that's just a five pound. Yeah. And then your well potentially might even get water from that pond. You know, I mean, it's Jaden Fallon. Yeah. Well, that you may want to, she says, well, she's worried about water sources. I mean, milestone is, is one of those that isn't real problem with moving in water. But again, with pines, you would not want to use it. You know, curtail or stinger. Stinger's fairly good for that, but you're going to have to be very careful on your application. Some of these can be used around water areas. It won't pollute your well? Oh, I'm not going to say it won't pollute your well. If your well's right there and it's a shallow well, you might say, you know what, all I'm going to do is mow. Can you just paint it on the leaves? Oh, can you? Pull, can you paint it on the leaves? Yeah, what you can get, and I have seen some people do this, it might help her. You ever seen those wick applicators? They're pretty cool. You ever paint your walls with those roller brushes? On campus, I've got to sometimes do some herbicide applications, but we have shrubs and that nearby, so you can't just say <laughs> But these wick applicators, the pesticide goes in it, and it literally goes out kind of a brush, and so you're touching the plants. If you got an acre, you're going to go nuts, all right? But if you've got a small area or an area that you say, I'm really, this is sensitive to me, you can literally touch the plant with the herbicides and do that. So, uh, stinger, yes, I don't believe so for curtail. And that, it's the, uh, uh, musk thistle is the other one. That's the one with the bigger, bigger leaves to it. By the way, this one's seed. This one, if you yanked out of the ground, it's gone. You've got, you've got it, okay? And that's, that's the one with the big leaves with a needle at the end of each leaf. Uh, it's a biennial, so that means it lives for two years. The trouble is the seed can be dormant for years. So you might pull out every one of them and say, well, how come they came up another year? Well, even if you got them before they, they flowered, and even though your neighbors might have any, if they're dormant in the ground, they'll be there for a while. So it's a slower problem. But that's one where I have seen people say, you know what, I'm just yanking them out. And it can be fairly effective. Even tillage. You just go out there and cut them. They're not strong enough to come back quite often. So, I mean, that, your, your trick there works. Again, severing the roots. You just go out there and start stabbing the things. Good aggressive thing. Get, you know, just out there beating the darn plants. Uh, you can mow it. That's going to keep it from flowering, all right? You'll kill it there. Uh, if it's in the rosette stage, where it's just that little leaf, because you might as well get it when it's small, you can use curtail or milestone again to spray. But for these, I've seen they're usually patchy. You don't usually find big pockets of them. They're patchy. That's where I've seen people say, you know what, I'm just going to go out and cut them, or I'm going to yank them, and you'll get the control. Have you heard of Redeem? Yes. Redeem's another one that'll work, too. Again, my list was just limited to it, but thank you. Yeah, yeah, Redeem is a good product as well. Is that for all kinds of thistle? Uh, for Canada thistle and, and musk. Leafy Spurge. You know what I use on Leafy Spurge? Probably saw that first picture I showed is just my play slide. That's my daughter with her goats, Nubian goats. Uh, we have dairy goats. Goats love thistle, and they love this stuff too, Leafy Spurge. Uh, yeah, again, read and follow label directions. I always have to put that in because you don't want oversprays or that. You don't have to have a special no, not, not a license for that. This reproduces from rootstocks and seeds. Anytime you got rootstocks, it's going to keep coming back. 
It goes deep, the roots are woody, it persists. This is number two weed in South Dakota. Um, plateau is probably one of the more effective ones for this. Uh, if you've got a real problem with that. Uh, we also have, and I know some of the counties have been using the flea beetle to go in there and feed it, and that's a pretty good way to reduce the population as well. This is one where we have a biocontrol that's actually very effective. Uh, by the way, it is toxic, as you probably well know, to horses and cattle. Knapweed is getting to be one of those, again, that's becoming it, and the identification, these are short-lived perennials, or biennial, so they don't live very long, and these are seed things again, so, you know, it's the yanking. You're probably noticing the yanking out is not a bad strategy except for our two biggest weed problems, and that's Canada thistle and the leafy spurge, where it's a long process to control them. But again, they can be sprayed. These in the rosette stage, when they're just very small plants, they're fairly easy to kill, and I, and I mentioned curtail and milestone just because there are two fairly common easily obtainable herbicides to use, but not the only. Is the, is the term rhizome the same as horizontal? Yeah, rhizome, an underground storage route. And I'll mention this one kind of as my last, and then Kurt can come up here for not questions on weeds, but other questions we may have. But you'll see this coming up quite a bit, common mullein. Uh, it tends to come up and disappear after a few years. You'll see it after fires or sometimes where you scarify the ground. It'll pop up, but it's just a biennial. Uh, boy, after the fires, 80, 80, 89, it was popping up everywhere. And you'll see it after a few things, but persists in disturbed soils. But since it's biennial, this is another yank and go. So, you know, your yanking works out fairly well for a lot of these except for our Two biggest, and the reason they're the two biggest is the fact that you get that underground root system. And too often people misapply, apply at the wrong time, or figure I'll use a lot of herbicide, got the bottle, let's use it up, and just burn off the top. And you've still kept that underground root system. So timing and rate are critical, and for most of these, you know, it might take two years of applications, but in some of my pastures, I've used, for example, Milestone, very good success, cleaned it up but I didn't have any pines nearby. I had the tree. So Ravine, you're saying a kitten thistle with Ravine, will it also do that? It will annoy it, but it may not kill it off. Oh, okay. You don't want to annoy it. This is, yeah. I know, it's nasty enough, but it's a little tougher, but Redeem will, will knock it back. I, you know, for those, this is the biennial. For these, I just cut them. And that, and usually you can control. Have you got a real problem with this? Has it persisted? Wow, you must have a lot of seed in that ground, because that's really what your problem is. Yeah, well, keep cutting it. it this is one that that shouldn't after a bit. Yes, sir. Hmm. That's one of the growth regulator ones. In that, it's. Uh, but where were you looking at that one? Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's fairly effective. It's just not as commonly available, and that and that's that's a point here. There's a lot of chemistry out there that'll work, and and if we mentioned it all, we'd be going through a very very long list. You know, people look at what can they buy, what can they find. Yes, ma'am. The other thing that I try to keep an eye out for is poison ivy. Oh yeah, you got that out here. Yeah. No, no, these are really, the, the ones I've mentioned now are really used on uh, woody perennial broadleaf weeds. Um, poison ivy is, is a, um, a woody plant. I mean, and if you get out east, it'll get to be a vine that thick. I mean, it's, it's a huge plant. The stuff you have out here is, is tame compared to what I'm used to. I mean, this is wimpy poison ivy. Well, Tordon. <laughs> yeah, but you want to be real careful. Uh, you'll hammer it or cut it. You can exhaust poison ivy pretty fast. And that, but, but I've done that where I've cut the stuff out and killed it off because it is a woody vine. Yeah. 
Really? Well, for a curly doc in a lawn situation, you got an email? No, I'm serious. You got an email? All right, make sure I get that, and I'll send you some stuff to that, because that's kind of a specific one. But that's an interesting one. Yes, ma'am? Yeah, the thistles, again, the curtail or the, or the uh, milestone will take care of the Russian. Yep, they have an underground root system, not as expansive, so they don't spread as much, but they do. They're still there, and the seed can remain dormant for a consistent time period. That's what surprises people. Quite often people think, and this is where we get I hate my neighbor sort of weeds. Everybody figures it came in from their neighbors. You can have seed remain on these things persist for years. And all you got to do is scare up the soil a little bit, and now you got fresh seed close. And that underground root system for many of these things. Again, I'm, I've got one area that I thought I hit and killed it back. And then we uh, mowed it and used it as a pasture, and this year I let it just go. And sure enough, there's a thistle in that one spot that it, it was there five years ago. And it didn't seed in, I just didn't kill enough of it. And just enough stayed there, all right, that, that it came up. So it's, it can be a very persistent problem. Yes, ma'am. Oh, yeah, I, I can go back on it. Yeah, I didn't know if we, do you have that as a problem? Yeah, that one is. Uh, that one's a tough one, but the advantage you have is it's an annual. It's got to reseed every year, so you can, you can cut it out and exhaust it. Trying to get rid of grasses in grasses gets very, very tough. You know, what you're, carrying broadleaf weeds is fairly easily done in this, but I know when we get down to... Um, um, uh, Shadron tomorrow and talk. This is one that the the brome can be a real problem, but at least it's an annual. It's, it does not persist, so you can exhaust it. But the real thing is to get it before it seeds. It does. It does. But if you can get it before it seeds, that's probably one of the easiest ways to kill it. After it seeds, it's going to come back that next year. And, but since it's an annual, you know, people say, well, I'm going to spray it in the fall. That's revenge spraying. You know, you're, you know you're, just, you're not actually getting it. So getting it out and not letting it go to seed is the big one. And Roundup, it, where you want to do the scorched earth policy, will work. I was just going to ask, because I haven't mentioned glyphosate, and I was wondering about, uh, you know, everybody seems to go out and buy it, and use it for everything. Oh, yeah. Which really concerns me. But what about if they pass on seed? Oh, good question. Uh, use of Roundup projects, the glyphosate uh, ones, and there's a lot of other... Uh, sprays now. That is a uh, systemic killer, non-selective, which means it kills everything. Uh, fairly effective thing to, to kill off. Uh, where we'll use it as a wick applicator because you touch the plant to it, it dies. All right? But here's the interesting thing. It does not persist in the soil. It breaks down very quickly. And one problem we have is somebody has a wick applicator, a pad on it, and touches the pad to the ground. Well, now you just broke, broke it down. I mean, it breaks down that fast. We've had people that, you know, put it a little on a, on a sponge, for, so to speak, and with, you know, with rubber gloves, too, and touch it. But they lay the, the, uh, uh, the pad down on the soil. Well, you've just broken it down. So Roundup products are fairly safe to use in that you have to get it on the plant. You'll kill that plant. But here's the end. They're safe to use around trees, but here's the problem. You've got a cute little aspen tree, all right? Just say you have one, all right? And you say, well, I got a little aspen tree. I'll just carefully spray around the base because I'm not going to get on any of the leaves. Well, aspen has green bark. It's undergoing photosynthesis in that bark. You can kill it by just getting it on the bark. Young trees, if the tree still has green bark and you get Roundup on it, you can injure or kill that tree because that tissue's still, still alive and will pull in that herbicide. The other interesting thing we saw, and this is more of windbreak applications than anything else, is sometimes you get sublethal doses. I got some great pictures of that, but not in this presentation where you've gone out in the fall and you've used Roundup, and the trees, you're not getting it on the trees, but you've got just a little on the buds. And so you damage the bud. And the next spring, when that breaks bud, you get all this distorted leaves because you killed some of the cells in the leaves, so you get a misshapen one. And, you know, you thought you did it when it was still there, and you're real careful, and you didn't get it on the trees. 
but you got just enough that you did a little damage. And I've also seen where people have applied it on wood chips around the base of the tree, and there's just enough roots, fine roots, coming up in those wood chips. You get those, and you don't kill the tree, but you stunt it. So it's a good roundup, and those products are very good, but people get very cavalier with them and figure, well, as long as I'm not spraying on the leaves of the tree, I can hit the trunk, and you know they'll say, well, I'm going to kill everything around the base tree, and they spray it around the base tree, and it's a young tree, and that bark is green, and now they're damaging the tree or they've damaged the buds. So it's, it's a product to be used, but a lot more cautiously than people use it. So, yes, sir. Oh, okay. So we're using crossbow on them. Yeah. And the guy with the vineyard next door was Ooh. not happy about it. Yeah, that. I can see why. It becomes volatile and it can drift in the air. Oh, yeah. And wipe out a whole vineyard. So I just thought I'd mention it. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know what? And, and one of our worst for volatilization are 2,4-D. And people will go out, and, and, and uh, this is more of an in-town problem, and, and it's what I call the retired guy problem. Uh, because it's the middle of July and they're bored and so they get out of the house and they figure what can they do they'll spray weeds and it's not a good time to spray the weeds but they're going to spray the weeds anyway and they go out with 2,4-D on an 85, 90 degree day and, they're and it's volatilized you can smell it in the air and anywhere it hits you know it'll do damage and, and grapes are very sensitive to everything you know, it's, it, as you're well aware. <laughs> uh, but, uh, and so are easily damaged by herbicides, a wide range of them. But yeah, you wa have to watch volatilization. Most of our problems with herbicides are people not reading the label and applying things, and it's killing non-target plants because they, they're on the label, do not use around. Or applying at the wrong time, because they didn't read the label, and just not killing the plant they're trying to, and it keeps coming back. So. You know, you always hear extensions say, read and follow label directions, but with herbicides, it's at, and don't ever think doubling the dose is going to give you a better kill. All right, it, it may not. And make sure it can be used in what areas if you're using it in what areas, because that's where we end up with spreading down and killing your neighbor's trees as well. I mean, I've seen some pretty good pockets in the hills here. Yes, yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of homemade recipes out there, some that work. A lot of them involve vinegar. Uh, and, 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 you know, for, for simple applications, they can. But you've got to be careful on those, too. Yeah, it, sometimes, you know, you figure it's homemade, so this has got to be okay, and you can kill a lot. Well, Yep. It's gone. Kurt, come on up here. We're, we're kind of coming up to time. We actually spent the day inside here. Uh, it was raining for a while. I don't know if it still is. But while we've got a group here, uh, is there a question in the back or comment? Yeah. No, it can have a little of a root system. Not, not quite like Canada thistle, though. It is, and, but what it is is you can yank it and you don't get quite enough of it. But that's why I say it's not the extensive underground root system that we get on the perennial ones like leafy spurge or that. Oh, no, no, no. No, so it's, when I say it's extensive, but... Right, you cut it, tillage, it's kind of like, almost like the uh, mullen, you know, you can tear those. Right, seed is the, seed is the thing, thank you.